Ahead of COP17, everybody's looking for cleaner, more efficient energy sources as the world commits itself to a new agenda. Now, South Africa's Economic Development Select Committee, in the presence of local oil industry players, earlier on today, they heard about the heightened concerns of the ongoing shortages of LP gas. I think that's liquefied petroleum gas, and that's experienced by all sectors of society, including industry, business, and domestic consumers. Let's find out what needs to be done to improve on the uptake and whether or not this is the cleaner, safer, and best alternative. We're joined now discussing the LP gas strategy by George Tatham, who is the CEO of Kaya Gas. George Tatham, thanks for your time. Discuss the ABCs of LP gas for me. As envisaged by the strategy, what are we calling for in South Africa? Well, um, LPG, or let's say gas uh, more broadly, because there are two distinct types of gas. There's LPG and there's natural gas. Um, in in the rest of the world, some form of gas runs nearly all, all households, uh, at least for their thermal applications. So that's cooking, heating, and water heating, space heating and water heating. So um, that, that, that's how the rest of the world uh, runs their, their domestic sector, besides, of course, the commercial, the commercial sector where it's much easier to, um, to cook at, uh, in restaurants on gas and so on. Um, yeah, and, and, and in that instance, I'm talking about both the, the developed world mm. and, and the developing world. So you look at countries like Brazil, um, Mexico, uh, or, or nearly all of South America, and, and most of Asia. They run their, their, the, this all runs on, on LPG. LPG is cheaper than, than, than electricity in a, in a normal economy, and now also in South Africa since the, the, the Eskom price increases. Mm. So, you know, that's an incentive. So that's going to drive, that's going to be driving uh, uh, growth in, in, in the market. But of course, the big constraint here is supply. Mm. Um, and uh, and that's, that, that is what has brought about this crisis, a combination of a lack of, 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 of import infrastructure, a lack of storage to right. act as a buffer, and then a, a, a whole series uh, of, of uh, refinery failures. Um, the government's also and, talking, uh, George. Those, those factors have come together to, to, to create this crisis of supply in the LPG industry. The government's looking at a variety of issues, but as you've raised, distribution is one of them, pricing is one of them, and um, part of the plan is if we were to move in this direction of LP gas, it's very important to regulate prices. And anecdotally, I want to support this call because in winter, I use a gas heater and just for that gas cylinder i'm paying anything between three to four hundred rands for a cylinder to refill it so before i even think about utilizing it for all my heating and cooking needs it looks to me like a fairly expensive alternative well if you're paying if you're paying three to four hundred rand for a for a um a cylinder of gas uh, that person is I, I, that's you know really uh, way way over what is what should be charged, and of course the regulated price. So after the introduction of the regulated price, that person is breaking the law. Um, unfortunately, uh, it has been necessary for the government to to uh, regulate LPG LPG prices. Um, you must remember that the LPG industry comes from a long uh, a long tradition uh, of uh, of the 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 oil. You know, it's a small part of the what was. Uh, a very cartel-like operation in the this, uh, uh, let's say, uncompetitive uh, or, or non-competing oligopoly uh, that was the uh, the South African oil industry. The rest of the industry of the oil industry seems to have moved on, but uh, the gas business um, continued to be dominated by by four players, the, the biggest of whom had a ex in a, around a 50% market share. So this meant that um, they, they just pushed prices to, to whatever level they wanted to. And, uh, and the, 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 the channel to market that many of the majors use is long and cumbersome. And so their margins, mm -hmm. margins and, and costs being added all the way down the channel um, with many, many snouts to feed in the trough. So um, there are companies like ours that have come in with a, a, a new uh, market model. Um, the base of our business is supplying gas to low-income homes, um, and we have a, 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 a completely different um, right. 
channel to market, a different pricing structure, and indeed uh, the, 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 the introduction of the regulated prices had no effect on our business because our prices we're already well below okay. the uh, George, talk, to us, about the, uh, talk uh, to us about prices. the future in terms of uptake because we do need a complete paradigm shift in terms of how we see gas as consumers. When I was in Europe last year, in France, all I could see driving through the Pyrenees, I think I said this to you earlier on, mm. were gas yeah. pipelines for kilometers and kilometers and apparently they stretched as far as Russia, which is the main supplier. So the issue is in South Africa we don't quite have that sort of infrastructure. Transnet would need to come to the party and to service 48 million people it looks like a big job no well th that that I think is I, I think you, you you must understand that there is a, tran a kind of life cycle in the gas industry the life cycle starts with LPG uh, providing gas and cylinders um, and then there would be the introduction of natural gas uh, of let's say natural gas in the form of li liquefied natural gas which would be brought in uh, to service the main industrial customers. That would then spread from there to high-density uh, energy-consuming uh, customers around those big customers. And then uh, ultimately, you can then bring in the long pipelines from, well, we wouldn't bring from, from Russia, of course, but <laughs> we'd bring them from Angola and other um, gas-rich, uh, and Namibia and other gas-rich uh, countries near us. But the, the, the thing is that, that the, the thing that seeds the market is LPG. And if you talk about the French example, I mean, fr France is still a market of three million, of three million tons. Mm. Um, South Africa sells 400,000 tons. So, you know, um, the, the, even when you've got that natural gas, LPG still has a very significant pl uh, role to play. Right. But that whole process will take about 20 to 30 years. Mm. And uh, in the meantime, it's, it falls on LPG to, to start that initial conversion. Um, if you look at, at developing markets around the world, and bear in mind that I've, I've been involved with the development of, of gas companies in uh, China, in Poland, mm -hmm. and various other countries in the world, um, the, the, the market will go through, uh, it hits a point where it needs to move to an, a new equilibrium. Right. And uh, it's not uncommon to see a market grow by three or four times uh, during that period. Okay. I mean, one just has to, in Africa, one has to look at, at uh, markets such as Morocco, where they have a market of, of 1.5 okay. million tons, um, say four times the size of South Africa, and they only have 32 two million people with okay. a far lower per capita, per capita income than we have in South Africa. So right. the potential for gas is huge, but it, it, the, and the, the place of growth is going to be the domestic market.